uh, Honorable Eric Adams, Candace Julian, uh, David Alexander, uh, Honorable Jeffrey Aubrey, Luis Emanuel, uh, Honorable Gail Brewer, Brian Lafferty, uh, Jessica Mates, yeah. Jessica Mates, uh, Victoria Camarado Curto, yeah. Marcy Castaneda, I saw her. Uh, Claudia Koju, Okay, Harold Miller. Um, Angel Gal. Uh, Rosalind Jumville. Francisco Feliz. Helen Foreman Hines is excused. Uh, Isaac Heschel. Barbara Sherman. Jessica Ackerman, Rita Jones is excused. Uh, Susie Tannenbaum. Present. Britannia Bushell. Here. Wayne King. Present. Greg Hambrick. Here. Gideon Dunkley. Here. Joseph Gagliardo. Joseph Pierre is excused. Uh, Lachey Young is excused. Basumati Patel. Present. Taj Berrien. Present. Victor Reyes. Tamika Robinson. Uh, Christian Rodriguez. Lisa Thompson. Edwina Martin. No. Dalia Soto. Here. Uh, Nina Saxon. I'm here. Okay. Uh, she's, she needs to be. She's a representative. She's got to be. Okay. Uh, Robert Oliva. Uh, Derek Tate. Yeah. Okay. Ariel. Sabransky. Gregory Grender. Here. Here. Janet Blue. Here. Linda Walters. And Peter Weiss. Okay, Monte Castaneda. Yeah. Here. Oh, no, she's not on board. Okay. Oh, she's not on You are? Over. Claudia. Vacancies, 
Chairperson Representatives, DYC staff reported that the election process has started for all three vacancies. Some of them have been voted on at tonight, some of them will be voted on at tonight's meeting. Unless, okay, excuse me. Unfortunately, the governance committee minutes on page 12 in the board package are for March 26, 2018. Staff has apologized for the error all members should have received at the door the minutes for the governance committee meeting on May 23rd, 2018. All that meeting, I mean, sorry, at that meeting, the elections for NAB chairpersons and Region 4 representatives were underway, and now, tonight, we have four new CAB members. Welcome again. Other details of the meeting are in the minutes. And those minutes were given to you uh, at the door, in your packet at the door. Okay, okay, all right. That's all, everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Linda. So the First of all, welcome to the new CAD members. Again, um, I'm going to circle back and we're going to recognize those members. Unfortunately, again, we can't vote them in uh, officially until we have a quorum, but since they are here in attendance, we obviously do want to uh, recognize them. Um, and then we'll circle back to, to vote on the governance committee report. Any questions on the governance committee report at all? Okay, great. So I'm going to, Ariel is going to go over the strategic partnership uh, committee report. Hi, everyone. Um, so at our last meeting, we talked about the FYP program again. You all received an email from me a few weeks ago um, talking about recruiting for this program. Recruitment has now closed as of last Friday, um, and the program should be underway in the next few weeks. The city council actually just increased their funding for or the administration increased funding for SYP so this year we're expecting about 75,000 uh, kids to participate in the program. Um, we also talked about recruiting to the MEBs um, and I believe that you should have received the chair people should receive lists of vacancies um, I think over the summer, I'm going to try to connect more with people who have vacancies in their specific districts so that we can work on filling those for next year. Um, we also talked about the NAB Ambassador Project. Um, we talked about ways to help people feel more comfortable in administering the survey. So we talked about possibly um, pairing people up to go together so that one person can actually talk to a group and the other person can to take notes and then it kind of makes things a little bit easier. So we're going to work on that over the next few weeks. The project ends in August, so we're kind of getting towards the end. Um, in terms of other work, um, currently we're recruiting for the youth board. Gian actually did a presentation a few weeks ago to try to get youth more involved. Um, and also over this summer we're thinking about doing some sort of cab retreat um, so that we can think of ideas for the coming year. And um, that is it. Okay, thank you, Ariel. Any questions on the strategic partnership committee report? Okay, great. So I'm going to just quickly go over the program committee report and Tamika's absence um, as it's customary, and I think this is probably the third year that we've done it. Um, the program committee sponsored the Roma training, which has uh, been heavily attended since we've done that. So I want to thank DYC uh, and all involved for arranging that training. It's been extremely helpful to the board. Um, that training took place on Thursday, May 10th. Um, the details of that training is in your minutes on page 14. Um, and will be in a PowerPoint presentation the members will receive uh, tonight. Um, not sure if any of you here are uh, present now that went to the, the training, but hopefully you got a lot out of that. Look forward to some more training.
that's going to take place. We talked a lot about the new board member training uh, for some of the new board members that have uh, joined the board and then some other subsequent training to help you be a more effective board member. Any question on the program committee report? Okay, great. So just to reiterate, um, if we do end up having quorum, we'll circle back and vote to accept uh, the minutes and the feedback from all these reports. At this time, I'm going to ask artists to come up and go over her financial uh, commi uh, committee report. Love the computer. My name is Arvid Sandogan. I work in the fiscal shop at DYC, and CSBG is one of my major portfolio. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Checking on call. cost and 14% goes to the DYCDPS budget. To date we have spending of 65% and that's $17.4 million. Our payments are $19.5 million. Uh, ideally we should be at the 83% rate um, but this, this report does not include the months of May and June because of the timing of the meeting. Um, if we want to dig into some of the areas, the NDA overall is spending at 61% at this point. Services for immigrant families. This, this, this program area had a new RFP start in the city fiscal year 18. And for every, every time a new RFP starts, the startup takes a little while for contracts to get registered and for expenses to be submitted. So um, the services for immigrant families and the fatherhood initiative as well, they were both had RFPs this year. And so their spending is much lower than the others. So services and plan is at 41 percent, fatherhood is at 41 percent as well. For the HRA legal services um, program, we're at an 80 percent rate, which is outstanding. Um, because I don't know if you guys remember, uh, the first few years this program was sent over to HRA, we had a difficult time getting invoices from them on a timely basis. So this is actually outstanding. Uh, the NICALI program is at 70% spending, adolescent literacy is at 61, and SYP, as you all know, that program starts and ends in the first two months of the city fiscal year, that's at 96%. Auto contractual uh, uh, services, we have some notable increases in the technical assistance area, that's at 45%. Uh, fiscal agent services, that's nearly at 100%. And we've, we're now seeing a lot more spending in the areas of marketing, publications, consumer supplies, and employer recruitment and development. The DYCD personal services budget is at close to 100%. Um, and we expect that this will be spent at 100% by the time we have the next meeting. Our fiscal unit will be spending the next couple of months um, doing an in-depth analysis of where spending is and, and setting, up, setting up accrual so that once the city fiscal year ends on June 30th, uh, we can, the, the providers will still be allowed to submit their expenses so that we expect this program to spend at the annual rate at about 96%. If we look at how, uh, sorry. if we look at a comparison to, last, to the last meeting, So the last meeting was on June 11th, 
and at that time, program, program contracts had spent $14.2 million. Um, at the $17.4 million, that represents a 23% increase. So if we're thinking of this as comparing it to two months spending, ideally, a two months spending would represent 16%, but as you can see, uh, the providers are starting to catch up on their uh, expenses. There's, that change is at 23%, which is a 7% difference. We've also seen some notable increases in the auto contractual services. We, last time we met, it was $480,000. Now it's at $767,000, which is close to 50, a little more than 50%. Payments um, are going to start to slowly catch up with expenses as we move to, towards the end of the fiscal year because, uh, as you know, we give an advance to our providers and we start to recoup those in the last three months of the fiscal year. So when a provider, say, submits their April invoice for $10,000, um, our payments folks are going to uh, recoup some of those advance in that, in that um, invoice and they wouldn't be paid $10,000, they'd be paid a little bit less. Um, but as I said, I ex we expect this program to spend at the annual rate of 96%, and what's not spent in city fiscal year 18 will be able to go into city fiscal year 19, so we wouldn't be giving up state dollars. Yes, just a quick question, could you keep talking about the percentage? I'm sorry, just state your name for the record. Um, Nina Saxon from the New York City Controller's Office. Looking at the numbers, um, I see what you're saying, but one thing that is not being clarified is the percentage. So you said 23% of this. It would be nice if you had a column that says this is 23%, okay. this is 100%, because you're not talking about the numbers, you're just saying the percentage, and it's a little bit confusing. That's really good advice. I'll make sure that that happens going forward. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. Oh, Any other questions on the financial quarterly report? It's Gideon Dumpley. Sorry, Gideon Dumpley. Just testing. <laughs> <laughs> Gideon Dumpley. I'm guessing I'm going to go back to the report that dropped before the 30th. The last meeting was um, June 11th. This data is out as of the end of April. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, just, so just a moment, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you just repeat the question so sure. the microphone can um, get it? Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. Duncan's question was, when does the new SYP program stop? Um, the SYP program runs in a different fiscal year from the rest of the DYCD's program because, as I said earlier, much of the action happens July and August. So the start of this the, um, SYP program year 18, uh, 19, summer 18, started on April 1st. So that's, that program starts on April 1st. And before then, our program folks were getting, uh, were running ads, um, trying to recruit uh, participants to, to apply for jobs. Uh, usually we have applications of about 140,000. Um, to date, they have run several lotteries where they're choosing from that um, group of applicants and they're, they're selecting people they, once they meet the criteria and uh, tagging them to CBO so that they can have them lined up for jobs. Um, before the program, the actual work date I think is the week after July 4th. Um, and before then, the providers will have a, an orientation and then they'll start working at the week after June, July 4th for six weeks. They work a maximum of 25. They could work a maximum of 25 hours per week, um, and so basically they are working second week in July until the third week of August, um, and that's when the bulk of the program happens. The providers still continue to submit invoices to us um, throughout the year from April 1st to March 31st, um, but the, this upcoming SYP program is about to start in about a month's time. I'm sorry. Your report here. Yeah. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. 
So on, on the SY paper, we're also taking into conservation projection because that fiscal year is ended up with March 31st. Yes, the CSB, the state allows us um, within the three year grant to move funds from one fiscal year to the next, from year one to year two, to year two to year three. And if, yeah, we, we get it on a three year block. That's, that's been a recent change. And so in year three, we can't roll over funds, but year three will be in fiscal year 20. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions on the financial quarterly report? Okay, one, just, just one state your name again. Nina Saxon from the controller's office. We, we, oh. Hello, I'm sorry. Nina Saxon from the controller's office. I think you said at the end of the report that you're going to be giving money back. Did you say that? No, no. Okay, sorry. Because you said it. No, I said we can roll the funds from one city fiscal year to the next. Okay, so that's what you said. Yes. Okay, from the last one. Okay, three years. Okay, three years. And it's three years, right? So the federal grant comes to us. They give us, they say, okay, we're going to give you funding, and this is where your funding will be for three years, right? So at the end of that three year, a new era starts, so to speak. Within that three, three years, year one, two, and three, we can roll year one under spending from year one to year two. We can roll under spending in year two to year three. In year three, we have to spend and claim 100% of it. So you have to spend all of it in the year three? Yes. Is it a way to also clarify that also in the financial report so it can be a little bit more clear? There is a do that? Um, just to, you know, just for clarity. That's not only if you show what we are this this is a this this and this report is on a um uh, it's just for one year. I'm not sure okay. when I would show that. But if you'd like, we can put a little note to the uh, a, a footnote that says this is year two of the the three year grant and people can be clear. Absolutely, absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Great questions and feedback. And we we yes, made a note of all, all the uh, all the feedback. Any other questions on the quarterly financial quarterly report? State your name. State your name. It's uh, David Alexander. Um, region thirteen. <laughs> anyway, my question is: Is there any way to let us know what? the cause of the rollovers are? What causes the rollover uh, passing the money on? So what, what causes, what's the main driver of underspending? Correct. Um, well, generally, um, most providers are a bit conservative because they don't want to overspend. So they start off with the fact that they don't want to overspend. And so when they submit invoices throughout the year, they're being mindful of not overspending. Um, because DYCD wouldn't reimburse them for anything over their budget, right? Um, one another main reason for this is providers have a plan to to provide a service for a 12-month period. Most of that money is spent on personal services, and there's a lot of turnover in the CBOs, um, and so when staff is not on the ground at day one their salaries can be accrued. So if I hire somebody, and this usually happens, that the program year starts in July, and somebody comes on board in August, that month's PS cost will never be recouped. So that's, a, that's actually the, the main reason for underspending by CBOs, but they're also cautious in that they don't want to overspend. Um, sometimes a, a, a program might be having difficulties, and our, our program unit at DYCD would, would have more knowledge of that, but generally, the big, the big thing is having enough staff on board at the time when the program starts, because you can never spend that, that those funds once it's gone. And uh, providers are also want to be conservative and they don't want to overspend. And so it's a fine line between spending 96 percent or spending 104 percent. No, no. So this this role is a DYCD's um, optional gate. DYCD is the recipient of these funds. The state looked to us to report to them. We we subcontract with our with our providers. They are our sub recipient, and 
they don't have the option to roll over funds. So, uh, a couple of questions. My name is Victoria uh, Camarada, and I'm with Region 14. <laughs> question about the uh, CBOs that let's say in that first year they overspend they'll never be able to recoup that because it's a three-year program no, no the three-year program that? only applies to DYCD to okay yes that's okay. Yeah. so they have to they have to really just balance come to the you know up to whatever amount yes. and if they understand they never get and they lose no. that money so what happens to that little bit of understanding? Um, that's what that's what DYCD. So a DYCD has a we've given out maybe twenty seven million dollars to providers. Let's say each provider had a contract of hundred thousand dollars and they spent ninety seven thousand dollars. That three thousand dollars left from three three hundred providers is now with DYCD. We will roll that mon money into the new city fiscal year. And generally, what we do is we plow that money in the SYP program. Because the SYP program starts starts and ends in July and August, so it, it will come out of let's say the NDA group that three thousand dollars each of the NDA group, and we take all of that money we put in the SYP program. So it's not going to the provider who underspent it, but it's still going into the larger CSBG funded program. Do you, all the providers get the same amount to start off? No, it depends on the program. You so know, if they underspend, you're going to give them less after. No, no. So we contract with our providers on a three-year basis. We had an RFP, we had an RFP that, uh, in 2015, and we awarded contracts in 2016. They signed a three-year deal, right? So fiscal year 16, 17, 18. They knew exactly how much money they would be receiving from DYCD for every year of that three-year contract period. Does that make sense? Right now, we're in the we're in the process of renewing that contract for two years. So they know what their budget will be for 2019, city fiscal year 19, and city fiscal year 20. But just to piggyback on that, if a particular agency under a particular contract is underspent that year, related in a given year related to an order the same, when July starts and the new year starts, the full <laughs> annual fund budget is still available to them. We don't start deducting funds like, oh, you're $1,000 under, so we're going to reduce your contract by 1000 that's that. That's the point. So the annualized expectations is an annual budget to meet those expectations. Uh, Mike Bob, assistant commissioner. One more question. Mm -hmm. So the money that the provider underspends does not roll over. Not to the provider. To the that's, that's, No, it goes into it goes into the DYCD pool. Okay. It goes back into the DYCD pool, and DYCD uses that money in the new city fiscal year on a CSBG funded program. A different CSBG. So, for example, SYP has a, a baseline budget of $1.2 million, right? And you see here that SYP actually spent $2.7 million in this year. Exactly. Because there was overspending the previous year, we were able to increase the SYP budget. We had the base, and then we added the rollover. Oh, um, Nina Saxon, okay. So, I mean, so with the excess money you put into Y, um, uh, YP, that's why you keep because that's like a baseline funding and it kind of helps young people in the summertime for those that are not being funded. That's like a, a, a and it has an administrative. It has a there's an administrative Got reason it. as well. When 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 the, when when we roll money from one year to the next, the state expects us to have expenses for that within the first six months. So SYP is the perfect vehicle because the bulk of the money is spent in the first two months. So we are, we're guaranteed that we'll be able to say to the state, we roll these funds over from the end of June, but look, in September, we're claiming 100% of it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I love this. This is the most dialogue we had on the financial report in a long time. It makes a much I guess it helps to have someone from the controllers on this here, too. Right? Yes, I said it. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, great. Again, and as I go through this agenda, I remind you that um, we can't vote on this uh, on this report 
Um, so we will have to circle back at some point to accept the report. But artists, we thank you. So there are uh, some new NAB chair chair reps uh, that we want to recognize. Again, can't vote on, but we want to recognize them. Cynthia Cox, is she here? Okay. And by the way, they don't have to be here for us to recognize them, but Cynthia Cox is the new chair rep for the Bronx Queens NAB Bronx 4. Uh, then we have Rhonda Joseph. Is she here? I'm here. Uh, you're behind the column. Okay. <laughs> Rhonda Joseph represents Brooklyn, NAB Brooklyn 17. Um, and then is Claudia Perez here. Oh, hi. We have Claudia Perez representing Man Manhattan, Staten Island, and AB Manhattan 11. So we welcome you. I uh, want to give you the opportunity now for both of you to address the board and say anything if you would like to. I just want to say um, thank you for allowing me to be here, and um, I just want to absorb as much as possible. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm looking forward to the work ahead, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Give a round of applause for the members. Okay, so I have a couple of letters here representing uh, council member offices, uh, dear Miss Anton Anita Antonetti. This letter is to confirm the appointment of Britannia Burgell. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay. Hi. Uh, as my prim primary council staff representative at the NYC Department of Youth and Community Development CAB meetings, and Bria Z. Great, is she here, Bria? Yeah. Okay, so Bria, be your alternate as my secondary staff member. Thank you for your attention regarding this matter, and feel free to contact myself or Chief of Staff Aisha Hernandez if further confirmation is required. Sincerely, Council Member Andy King's office. Next letter is from the Office of the Bronx Borough President. Dear Commissioner Chong, please be advised that I've reappointed Monica Major, my Director of Education and Youth Services, as my representative to the New York City Community Action Board. This appointment is effective immediately. Angel Gord, Jr., Education Liaison, will serve as Ms. Major's alternate. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me directly. Sincerely, Ruben Diaz's office. Excited about that. Monica's been, Ruben Diaz Jr. Uh, Monica's been a faithful uh, representation of that office that I'm meeting. Angel. And Angel, Man. pleasure to meet you. Thank okay. You. Um, next up, from the office of the Comptroller's office, please take notice that Ms. Nina Saxon will serve as my representative at the DYCD Community Actions Board's meeting to be held on. Thursday, June 14, 2018. Please provide Ms. Saxon with the agenda and all relevant materials. This, designa this designation is effective immediately and limited to the above reference meeting. Do we only have you for one meeting? Well, maybe more. Okay. All right. Good. So let's welcome them all to the meeting. And we'll quickly we'll have them, give them an opportunity to address the board as well. Hello everyone, um, my name is Nina Sachs and I represent the New York City Comptroller Scott M. Springer. Um, I really like this board, I like, I like the diverse, um, um, everyone that's here, so I will be talking to the proper people to see if I can stay on permanently. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Angel Gowd. I am the education liaison for the Bronx Board President, Ruben Diaz, Jr. This is actually my second time being here. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Virginia Marshall. I'm actually here to, as a representative of Council Member Andy King. And uh, this is actually my first CAB meeting, so I hope to gain a lot of knowledge and you know, 
love experience here. So thank you. Thank you. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you for being here. So just two items really quickly just for you to review. Um, we have the minutes from the previous meeting in your packet, so please review that. Once again, can't vote on it. We also have the meeting calendar for fiscal year 2019 um, that I would like you to review. That's in your packet. Um, BYCD and everyone involved did their best to really make sure we avoided any and all holidays and observances. You know that we uh, uh, observe any holidays, major holidays and religious observances. And for those who have uh, notified us previously where there was a conflict, we appreciate that. It's a lot of holidays. So if there's anything that we may have missed in this calendar, please bring to our attention. We, we're uh, flexible to really adjust the meeting at the drop of the dime, but we want to make sure we observe all uh, religious and, and major holidays on that meeting. So please review that, and at some point uh, we'll need to vote on that. Um, before we go to the next part of the meeting, I want to thank everyone that's here today um, to make the meeting. Uh, we know this is a volunteer board. We know how seriously a lot of you do take these these meetings. Um, up until now, we've, we've made quorum every meeting, um, especially under the tight new uh, quorum standards and rules that was implemented uh, late last year. So I just want to applaud you on that and just really encourage you to be consistent um, because if we don't have the opportunity to vote on these action items this meeting, then we really need to decide how we're going to move forward to, to be able to vote on these items so it's not held up. If, if a lot of these items are pushed to uh, the next meeting, that's going to be a little bit longer meeting for us to be able to uh, do that. Certainly don't want to just call a special meeting if we really don't have to, to be able to um, uh, vote on these items uh, based on quorum rules. So thank you for being diligent um, in doing that. And if any of your CAB counterparts you're in contact with, um, just let them know it's really important to be to the meeting. We really do understand that things come up. Um, but. You know, the meetings are, I don't know, four or five times a year, so it's important for us to be able to do uh, the business that we're here to do. Uh, with that said, I'm going to ask our Deputy Commissioner to come up, uh, give her uh, report, and that's going to lead right into uh, uh, the presentation phase of this. I think this is the better mic for you. This mic seems to be... You don't like this one? I don't know if that one is. <laughs> the volume is... Hello, everybody. Hello. So, some of you don't know me yet, right? You've never met me before? <laughs> so, my name is Sandy Gutierrez. I am the Deputy Commissioner at uh, for Community Development at DYCD. And, um, you know, you don't, when you get on this board, you're not going to do things the way that you think you're going to do. I'm just giving you a little warning before we start. Um, so greetings of, you know, the commissioner came the la to the last meeting, um, and I'm glad that he came. You know, uh, excuse me, but I was uh, ill that day and couldn't come to the festivities, but I missed it. I heard it was a great meeting. Um, he is, uh, I'm guessing, on his way to vacation, right? Um, Phil is. And so he couldn't be here today, so he left me to welcome you and to say, um, to give you congratulations for everything that we've accomplished this year. And there's been a lot. We've accomplished a lot. And I was telling Greg at the beginning of the meeting that there's been so many firsts, right? It's, uh, and and I, I've lost track, so. He said you should document it, and I will. Maybe we'll show that off the next at the next meeting. But for today, I want to first acknowledge that there's so much work that has been done with this board. First of all, the fact that we have made quorum, voted on things, and really moved things along so well. This might be the first meeting in a long time where we haven't met quorum, right? So. 
your participation here is so incredibly important to us. Not just because you're voting, but because your voice is so important to what we do. And the questions that you were asking before, that's a first. <laughs> because a lot of times people will ask one or two questions. But the fact that this board is becoming much more active in inquiry and in, in figuring out what this whole thing that you're involved in is about is really important. But I, I feel so proud that that's happening on my watch. Right. Um, so for the first thing that we that's an accomplishment is that we, you've heard us talk a, a lot about the across and the tracks. And those are these huge reports that we have to do for the state. And we have to meet standards because the state has a whole bunch of standards, just like you do in your house. And um, schools have standards about when kids pass and that whole thing. Well, we have 50 of them. They gave us 50. Well, that's for one report. How much does a tra how many does the tracks have? The tracks has the same 50, but they also have over 100 indicators. Indicators. So we have to report. You should see the way that we prepare for this report. So we have boxes, and everywhere there's a document that that not only demonstrates but proves that we did that. We put it in the box, and by the time that we end, we have how many boxes? Nine boxes. Nine boxes. But within each box had all the indicators. All the indicators and whatever. Anyway, long story short, we got 50 of the 50 standards. We completed all of them. So we should get something back from this state. This is a first, by the way. First. Um, and uh, we should get something back from the state, right, soon, yeah. that says that we've not just completed the tracks, I mean the, the across, which was the last one, but the one before that that has all those hundred indicators, well, we also did that. So when Becky Parsons comes, that's what she does. She checks on all the paper, makes sure that everything is in there. So that was um, one of the, the biggest accomplishments. Recently, actually, Becky came last week, and then we met um, Mr. Manuel Rosa, who's the new, what is his title? The Director for the Division of Community Services. And he took uh, the place of? Dr. Veronica Cruz. Veronica, did, did, did you meet Veronica Cruz before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did, right? Did. Good. So um, we met with him, and we told him all about you. And we told him everything that we're doing on the board. He was really engaged. Um, and two things that he really, actually three things, because you know I was showing off, right? I was totally showing off. So the three things that he really was um, interested in was to replicate the ways that we do our meetings, the ways that we get people engaged. That was one one thing. How do, how do we do our reporting? The other big thing that he talked about was that he wanted to make sure that the smaller organizations, the smaller CBOs, were also being considered for funding as, as well as, as the big ones. We explained to him that we really can't do this work without the smaller CBOs. The smaller CBOs are those anchor CBOs in those local communities that everybody knows. They have a lot of, they don't got a lot of money, but they have a lot of influence. And they know that they have the pulse on the community. So we really can't do without that. And so we've been doing at BYCD because of our mission, we've been doing a lot of stuff with the smaller CBOs, especially through our discretionary um, portfolio. And you know that, that the discretionary portfolio, the council money, is in this portfolio, community development. So what we've done, you didn't know that? Okay, so yeah, so that's part of this portfolio. So what we've done is we've taken those small organizations and we've figured out strategically how they're gonna do better over time if they, as they, through technical assistance and training, um, so that then they could improve their services and, and improve mostly their infrastructure, because the services are great. The issue is they don't have the infrastructure. So giving them training and technical assistance on that, 
and then finally getting them into the bigger portfolio, which, uh, you know, wherever their funding takes it. We're doing that in literacy, for example. So in literacy, we had um, our, our regular contracts, and then discretionary was off on its own. So we took all those, those smaller organizations, and we are giving them technical assistance on content, um, how to do instruction, how to set up the classrooms, how to grow their classrooms, how to do recruitment, so that the next time they go for funding for the council, they can go for more funding, but they already proved they can do it, and now they, they can get into the bigger portfolio. But we're doing that strategically with every, uh, the, all the seven areas. So he was really interested in how we do that, and he wants to be able to, to replicate that. We're gonna keep talking to him. We, didn't, we actually didn't show him the community needs assessment, but we will, because we were really showing off. So there was so much we could show off with Bob. And we also completed our report for year two. You might re recall that we did a strategic plan, right, in 2016, and we gave it to you, and you guys weighed in on it. Well, we did this, the, uh, you, you completed this, year to report. Did we get that done? Yeah, they last, last meeting. Okay, perfect. You got it last meeting. Um, the other thing that's happening is that we promised that we were going to not just do the community needs assessment, but that we were going to continue those co community conversations. Well, they have continued through the ambassador project. We continue to have conversations with the community in those um, neighborhood areas where we were asking them, is this right? You know, remember the community needs assessment? Well, we are asking them, does this make sense? Is it right? What did we miss? Is there something that you need to add? We said that we wanted to keep the data fresh and that's what we've been doing. So that's part one. The other part is to do with the community, I know you like this, with the community-based organizations, right? So we go to the, and we ask them the same questions that we're asking the community. We're asking the community-based organizations, did we get it right? What are of these services is not working? What should we do next? And so we're having a lot of conversations, gathering all that data before we get on to our next piece of work, which is the Community Needs Assessment 2019. But that's a surprise. In a little while, I'll tell you about that. Um, and finally, um, this was an integration effort because we got everybody at BYCD to fiscal, legal, all our different departments to weigh in on what we were doing, which is what I, we're going to do in our exercise next. As far, I know you're all curious about the federal budget. And uh, last month, DYCD participated in a conference call with the National Community Action Foundation. And we were advised that there's ongoing discussions about maintaining and possibly slightly increasing CSBD funding nationwide. That's very good. Wow. That was a surprise to us. We did not expect that to happen, but, 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 but we're glad. We're glad. We're grateful. Um, finally, in July, we, uh, we will, our annual refunding application is due in July. But we won't meet till September, right? So that means that Greg uh, will actually put that to a vote um, in the executive committee, right? And um, and then we'll send we'll send it to Bill and everybody else, uh, uh, the commissioner, and everybody will sign off, and we'll send it off to the state. SYP and SYP, we saw a growth of seven. We went from seventy thousand young people to seventy five thousand young people. That wow. was There's a lot of young people working, but there's a whole lot more that need jobs. And I had, you know, I had some conversations with Greg about how all of this gets done. 
One of the big problems that we have um, in SYP is that young people apply for the job, so they'll get into the lottery. But then what happens is they don't show up for work that Monday. So if you know people in your neighborhood who or kids who applied, please make sure that you're connecting with those young people. If you know somebody who connects with a lot of young people, will call for the lottery, but the young person did not show up, please encourage them to show up to work. Because that young person doesn't show up, that other kid didn't get that job. So we need the community's help, please go back. We need the NAVs to help with this too. We, we heard this as a big problem. Um, and big, I mean, you know, if we, if, if, if it's 75,000 kids and, and 2,000 don't get a job, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> so one kid is too many not to, not, not to work. So we need the community's help on, on this front. Question. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have a question about worksites. Could you address, uh, uh, state your name, please? Yeah, Jennifer Chow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a question about worksites because I am definitely familiar with uh, SYP because I was a private photo when I was a member. So I have a question about. Okay, so I have a question about the actual worksites uh, being, you know, put into the program. Do you guys choose the worksites because I would say not to be biased or anything, but I would like to say in my experience, you know, some of these people who join the program want to get jobs within the field they eventually want to get into, you know, let's say after they graduate college and they feel like SCM can help with that. But sometimes they're just getting placed in like summer camps or other places that are just completely irrelevant to the career field that they, you know, want to pursue. So do you guys choose the sites or is there a possible way to introduce the different fields of or to the program. So there's there's several different ways that we have, that we choose work sites, and some of them are very specific for um, for a, a specific set of kids. So if you're at a particular skill set, and you then you would go into ladders for leaders. And in, I'm saying skill set meaning that you've had a job before, you know how to show up for work. You don't curse people a lot when you get there. That kind of stuff. You know, just the basic skills of really getting um, going, going. And, and there's a lot of interview process for that project. And those uh, work sites are very, very specific. Then there are work sites that have to do with what you said. The general work sites are after school programs. They're actually, pro you know, a lot of these community based organizations cannot do without SYEP over the summer. So I wanna I wanna be on the side that says, you know, maybe it maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't actually match a young person's um, aspiration, but there is a need there for that those young people to work at those sites. And oftentimes that as what look, I started at SYEP. I'm the deputy commissioner. Let's not uh, you know, <laughs> underestimate the power of working in a, in a summer program. But I hear you, and I think what, what happens is that it is difficult to get work sites this many, right? This many work sites with a variety of, of, of um, work sites and people who are committed. Because even if you get a really good work site, you might get a really good work site where, you know, it matches perfectly. But the people there are not equipped to deal with young people. And in those cases, then we have to kind of step in. So there's all kinds, there's all, there's a variety of work sites and I gotta tell you that just on that front alone, it is very difficult to get people to sign on. And that's the reason why there's not the variety that's actually needed. <coughs> but from that said, from your office, if you know people who, or you have some influence where you can add to work sites, that's where we need people. That's one of the things that, that Greg does for us. And how many young people do you hire? Uh, at Modell's? About 350. Okay. 
about 350. But everybody's not like that. They'll hire two kids the next right. year. They'll say, oh, that's too much trouble, so I'm not going to do it. But, Did um, I answer your question? Um, but that's a problem, I feel like. I, I think that with um, YS, with YSEP, that, I keep getting wrong, SYEP, so, for some of you, um, because, um, you know, we need to get young people um, out the street and, you know, into these types of, of, of working environments, is there actually like a campaign or something that can have different types of tracks? Um, we do. With different, is there a brochure? Yes. Um, and if it is, and if it is brochures, how how is we how is um, DYCD really pushing community like the community board, the Youth and Education Council? Um, how are they pushing these pieces that do locally to make sure that um, it's getting out to the community, to so that young people can know that um, this is happening? Because a lot of things that I see. Um, in Harlem, is that a lot of the parents um, don't know about the work site. They don't know when um, where their kids are supposed to go that first day. So it's all about transparency. So my question is, I see the seventy-five thousand. You got to seventy-five. I mean seventy-five thousand. But how can we make this like grow to like a hundred that a hundred thousand um, using the community impact? So let, that, let me, that's what I really want to know about. So let me say this, and the Deputy Commissioner is fully equipped to answer this question, but you're raising a point that's been discussed quite a bit in this room and the point that was made uh, before. The issue has always been not enough viable work sites um, and not enough, enough work sites in certain boroughs. So I'm looking at Aline um, here who represents Bronx, and her, her and I have had numerous conversations about the lack of um, uh, work sites in the Bronx, and Helene, you'd be happy to hear that a lot has happened since then through the uh, Bronx Borough President's Office. But there have been campaigns uh, to get additional to get additional work sites, and that campaign is dependent upon two things. Number one, all of us in the room kind of spreading the word, and work sites who, who currently participate in the program who can reach out to their networks and companies and partners about the importance of the program. Let's, you know, let's keep it real. There are certain companies, and you know, Deputy Commissioner kind of alluded to this, that stay away from it because there's still some type of perception of dealing with youth 14 to 24 to work in you know, corporate environment and in certain companies and in certain uh, fields. I've said this consistently. I think there's an opportunity for every single industry and every single company within the city to house a young person. You know, forget that Models. You know, we hire three fifty to four, but we should do that because we got forty eight stores in the city. So everyone is wowed by that number, and I'm proud of the number. But we should be doing that. We started off where we only had like ten. 15, and when I saw an opportunity, I didn't ask the manager to do it. I said, we're doing it, let's just talk about how we're gonna execute it. Mm -hmm. So they should be doing it. So I think um, the answer really to your question in a roundabout way is that there's never gonna be a shortage of young people through that lottery. How many, so we talked about how many went through the lottery, but how many applications? I think it was it's over 100 and something thousand. So many more applications up than Actually get right, so we need the work sites to meet the needs of the number of applicants. Two years ago, we were like, I don't remember the number. I remember when we really first started reporting, we were like 50, 55,000, something. We had 75,000, so that's close to 20,000 more young the, people the, getting The jobs. other big, big issue is, is uh, community-based capacity. So right. you have a CBO who can because of their space, let's say, mm -hmm. right? They have three classrooms that they can um, accommodate SYP. They can't take more than whatever that classroom can accommodate. Right. And for teenagers, I don't know what the ratio is, but there's, there are ratios. So you can't, you can't just take 100 kids because you want 100 kids. You can only take, if it's 20, it's, going to be 60. Capacity for your program is going to be 60, even though you want 100. 
even though you really want to hire 100. So one of the things that we've been doing is working with the community-based organizations to really explore what their capacity is and what their limitations are. So there's a lot of, let me say this, and then I'll, I'll go on to the next thing, is that there's a lot of moving parts to this. So there's a community-based organization, there's the kids, there's the applications, there's the money, there's the uh, employers, there's the employers that shouldn't be employers. Um, so we got we, right. we, we a lot going on here. Right. And there's a lot of people in the city who are looking at this program, not only just as a community, not just as SYP, a six or a six week program, but as a pathway to do something bigger, right? And we have to think about all those kids. Now, the portfolio has been um, divided uh, in the last couple of years so that vulnerable youth is in one portfolio so that we can give them special services. So there are different kinds of portfolios. Now we have a portfolio that is in high school which we never had before, this is the first year that we're doing that, where the jobs are actually in their schools. There's a lot that has happened. I'm terrible at presenting this one because there's so many pieces to it and this is not in my wheelhouse, but we can have somebody come and present. What does SYP look like this next year coming? Because every year it's changing and it's changing a lot for the better. But this is no joke. <laughs> this, pro this program is no joke. It's the shortest program, but it's the most effort goes into it. Okay? Yes. Um, I'm on the board for Mars Science Health Center. Mm -hmm. I have repeatedly passed the information on to the marketing director. And each time I went to do a meeting, I asked her if you asked me to live 23, and she said no. And I've given them emails, back and forth, phone numbers, everything. Um, Joseph is not here, he's retired, but he passed it on. The last time he was here, the young lady who gave the presentation, I gave <coughs> the email to the marketing director. And I, the, the next day, the next week, I had a board meeting, and I spoke to the marketing director, and DYC did not reach out to her. Um, I want to stop right there. Uh, this young lady here made a very good point. And I want to tell you that. On my board, I have the president of York College, and I have the president of Bronx Community College. Okay? So here's an opportunity where we could use the SYP students to work in either a community college or either a senior college. There's also the Parks Department, okay? And, and these are different areas. Uh, my son was in the, um, the, the SYP program, and he's now an engineer, okay? And we we have a partnership with the Parks Department. Yeah. Okay, that's right, so, so this is what I'm saying. So what she said is, my son, he's an engineer, but when he got his program, he got into one of the, he got into one of the SYP program that actually accelerated this is interested in engineering, okay? So what I'm saying is with the Parks Department, HHC, New York City Transit, these are places that, and also community colleges, where we can partner with different city agencies to put some of these kids in. Uh, solar energy right now is a huge, huge, huge thing right now. In California, they just passed a law that every new house built has to have solar energy. So here's an opportunity where we can partner with Bronx Community College to give the kids hands-on experience in solar energy or whatever else that they're interested in. Okay, so I think it's a good point that we can make. And I just want to bring that to your attention. I think we're all in agreement. We have partnerships with all those people you name. And, you know, like I said, this is, this is something that everybody Everybody's focusing on and working out all those partnerships. Well, in fact, at the top of the list, what she's trying to make the point is um, when the kids apply, 
do they have like, can they apply to like a specific area? Let's say I'm interested in the parks department, I'm interested in transit, I'm interested in engineering. Yes, the, the, application, the application asks you what you're interested mm -hmm. in. Okay, good. I, yes. I, I, yes, I think she was talking about the one, you were, were you talking about the ones that were uh, in the community-based organizations? And then in, in the after school fund, the summer program. Right, 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 because I, I remember going to orientation. And a lot of the times when they, you know, taught us, you know, not only the development skills, but how to interact, like when you're on the job, it mostly related to like, um, I would say like summer camps and you know after school programs. Like they weren't necessarily like prepping you for. I mean, I did see a few like medical jobs. I gotta tell you, this program has changed in the last, in the last three years, but in the last two, it's totally, totally changed. It's not at all like what SYP used to be at all. So I'm going to have somebody come and talk about that that knows how to talk about that in full detail. So you can be, be convinced because I always have to convince him. All right. And then we have to move on. Can we move on? Or can I ask you a question in the middle? Of the go ahead, go ahead. Okay. My question is um, because you, you touched on this point about um, employers that are not qualified to take our youth, is there a listing or some type of guideline to, so that we won't waste our time when we're trying to get employees, uh, to tell us who to look out for? Or just to tell us what type of, what the qualifications should be for that particular No, employer. there's not nothing, well, the employers have to apply, first of all. They gotta apply okay. just like the kids apply. Mm -hmm. But you, we don't know what happens until the, after they get there. Mm. So when, yes? There's some, there's some guidance the SYP team does. Like they can help the providers understand what it is to be a suitable work site. They also can forward that to us. So when employers are interested, we can have them follow up. There's some guidance that they offer. Afterwards? Okay. Well, no, before, pre, before they officially become a work site. Yeah, that's guidance. what I'm saying, that the oh, after, employers yeah. have to they, got, they need whatever guidance is there. There are guidelines. You can't just have young people in your space and not, mm -hmm. not know what to do with them. You, you've got to do something with them. Yeah, there's due diligence it's, before the process and then there's due diligence you. after, and especially since we're talking a 14 to 24 right. year old age group. Like, you know, 14 to 16 can't work in certain places due to liability issues. So. That has to be considered, even though they want to be in the workplace. So there, there are some certain guidelines depending on the industry, the location, and things like that. And a rep from the uh, CBO does come and, and check. I mean, when they go to our sites, so they're checking where fire extinguishers are. I mean, they're doing a whole lot of stuff to make sure it's safe and suitable for the kids and that everybody's on board. And then there's weekly follow-ups with the kids like uh, deputy commissioner said it's, it's much different it's very structured it's very involved it's a great program but a lot of a lot of stuff goes into it okay. so what i was to saying no to mike was his question was, do, do we have a list of the employers that are not good we do not have to yes just to give them a little bit of reassurance i work with the youth and just uh state your name please I'm from my head and family um, just give you reassurance, I work in the community with the kids and it is totally different religion. They ask them more or less what they want to do, but like she's saying, they see when they call, they go with the pages and they're prepared and they never worked before. Some of them are shy, so that's why they put them sometimes in the parks to see how they, you know, work with the kids. But they do ask them, they do place them in hospitals, then parks, and schools. And some of them with the subway, you know, they do. And depending on the age, like the kids that are listening to, they do. By the way, we have 12,000 sites, for example. 12,000. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving on from SYP. We just have to do one more thing. Um, so, you know, we, we have uh, a wonderful chairman. Yes. <laughs> And so we nominated him for an award, and guess what? He won. He got it! Yeah! So we're going to ask that he went, he, he came, he, 
came from Albany today, straight here. It's all about commitment. Straight here to run this meeting. And the name of the award is the NISCA Community Action Vision and Values Award. And Mike, can you come up and read the letter that uh, we sent so that he could receive the award? And this is a first, another first. Another first. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner. <laughs> uh, there were two letters, the nominating and the supporting letter, or reading the nominating letter. Uh, Greg has just been elected to a second three-year term on the CAB, representing the private sector. During his first term, he guided the board through a period of growth and change, fostering an enhanced camaraderie and deepening the already professional nature of the board. His commitment to community action is unquestionable and inspirational. As an executive with Model, Model Sporting Goods, he has ensured that his company over the years has employed youth in the DYCD Summer Youth Employment Program and is led by example is also a committed member of DYCD's youth board. In the past year, and leading into his new term, he has been a fundamental partner with DYCD in elevating the activities of the board to new heights while creating new opportunities for deep discussion on major community action issues before the CAB. His work has been a living example of the mission of the agency and, as expressed in the agency's strategic plan, to maximize civic engagement and providing means for local low-income residents to have a voice in setting priorities for federal anti-poverty funding and to participate in the community development planning process. Under his guidance, the board has become a more collegial and focused body. He has helped creating a new meeting agenda which guarantees opportunities to hear substantive presentations and to deeply discuss matters initiated at the committee level. And he has engaged the members in new ways to encourage their full participation and contribution. His help the staff create a multi-part, sophisticated series of board trainings on such things board member, as board member roles and responsibilities and conflicts of interest. By doing so, under his leadership, the board has grown to a highly functioning, engaged partnership, assisting the agency in providing vital services for New Yorkers in need. We're, we're just so proud and so thankful and so grateful, not just for you um, leading this group, but for this group. Um, you guys have been so great and just so gracious and certainly putting up with me when I have you running around the room and doing all kinds of things. <laughs> Actually, today I was going to have you do that, but then we ran out of time, yeah. so we can't do it today. But we will, but we will save that for, for the, the next time. So what we were going to do was an exercise on something that um, we, I, I don't think you've seen this, Greg. Um, so they're going to put it up now. What we did, check this out. What we did was we planned all the way from 2017 to 2021. Everything we're going to do is on the chart that they're putting up there. Everything, everything, your cab meetings, everything, everything that we're going to do between now, oh, what we started in 2017 to 2021, up until the RSP hits the street. Um, tell me we ain't bad. <laughs> Please. All right. The reason why I wanted to show this to you is because that's part of what we this group, together, leadership, staff, this board has brought together. That we know how to organize the work, we know how to get it done, we have a plan, and that plan, and whenever you plan something well, it's gonna get done. So when you leave, when you start leaving, you can take a look up there at all the tasks. It also has all, it contains all the tasks, not only that what we're doing, but it contains what FISL's going to do, what procurement's going to do, what staff is going to do, what NAB's going to do, what CAB's going to do. What ev everybody who has their fingerprints on this thing, that is CSBG, is up there. Yeah? That's good. Are we going to do 
do the presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But first, um, you need to. Uh, and I'm done, right? Sandy, you good? You're, you, you're you're done, done for the moment, but you're going to have to come back up. Oh, okay. Uh, um, so first of all, thanks to Deputy Commissioner, Commissioner Chong, to Anita, to Joe C, who's recently retired. And by the way, so Yeah, <laughs> For sure, but I appreciate it. Listen, the nomination to be considered for that award is, is enough, seriously, for the work that we do. To, to actually receive the award really is icing on the cake, but where's Mike Bobbitt? Is he right there? So Mike can attest to this. First of all, Mike, I, you heard me talk about what happens behind the scenes and you don't know. Mike, um, I don't know, Mike is like mayor in Albany for the right CD. Mike, really, he knows everybody, he's engaged, he networks well, he is aligned with all that's happening there, which is clearly why he's effective in his role here with uh, DYCD. Uh, but when I accepted the award, it really was the award based on everyone in this room and based on all the programs that we support here. So I want to thank you for making this a successful body. You know, we are, we dwarf any other community action board. So sometimes you don't know what you know and you take it for granted, but you know, they hear 45 member board and they hear all the programs. They hear our budget and they're looking at us like we're crazy, like, are you serious? Like how? And you know, we make it happen and to get a perfect 50 on their cross and to do all these things, I mean, that really should not be understated. So all of you deserve a round of applause for all the work. Thank you. Uh, one bit of housekeeping note, I forgot one uh, rep chair rep that needed to be uh, recognized, uh, Yesenia Cardona, Region 4. Is she here? Oh yes, okay, Yesenia, I uh, apologize. From NDA Bronx, 7 and 8, uh, she's here. Uh, so thank you for attending the meeting, we appreciate it. Um, okay, and I want to acknowledge Cynthia Cox, who, Cynthia, just raise your hand, I know you came in. We acknowledged you earlier, uh, but we thank you for coming. Uh, to to the meeting, and we understand, so we appreciate it. Um, so as far as, uh, and thank you again, Deputy Commissioner, for that report. As far as all the action items on the agenda, um, we will circle back to you in terms of how we're going to address it, but as it stands now, and we can't do a consent agenda to these items, so we really have to go through it and approve each item. So. Um, we may opt to include this as part of the agenda for the next meeting and just really, really quickly go through all the items that we talked about here. So everyone just keep your agenda so you know all the things that we discuss. And if that does happen, we'll email this information back out to you so we can uh, approve all the items, accept all the items here. Um, so next is the fun stuff. So I'm going to ask Deputy Commissioner to come up with me as we recognize Three former staff members. So these certificates and acknowledgments all say the same thing, but I really want to recognize each one individually. So let me get all of them. Now I'm excited about recognizing each and every one because they spent a significant time on the CAB and each one was very vocal and very involved as a member of the uh, CAB. So let me first read what it says here. From the Department of Youth and Community Development with the New York City Community Action Board hereby presents this certificate in great appreciation of the many years you have graciously given to the Community Action Program through your work as a member of the respective board and the Community Action Board of your respective NAB chairperson rep. Your efforts on behalf of these, those in need in our community have helped make New York City a better place for all. Presented on this day of 14th of June, 2018, signed by the Deputy Commissioner, and myself. 
New York City Department of Youth and Community Development. Okay, so I'm gonna rehab these nine. Okay, so let me do a last. So the first one I'm gonna present is to Gloria Benfield, who represents Region 2 for Bronx and AB, 3 and 4, a lot of you know. So a lot of you know she has served previously as a member of the executive board, has been very involved in committees, um, and let's talk a little bit about what she does outside the CAB. She runs her own nonprofit where she has an annual uh, fundraising dinner to award scholarships to young people going to college. I attended a couple of these events and she does this tirelessly and by herself. Like you think like she has a staff of people, she has people that support her, but I've literally witnessed her to the day of just running around to prepare and get these things done and, and, and prepare these young people who have graduated for college. She's partnered with um, educational facility, music facilities and so forth. So everything you see that she's done here as a member of the CAB, she does even three times more in her community and as uh, running her own foundation, GMD Foundation. So I'm happy for your years of service. I miss you already. Um, but you, this is greatly deserving uh, of you. So for Gloria Benfield, let's give her a hand. It has been an honor um, serving our community and being with you. Um, it's a little sad, but yet I am so happy to see Nina uh, join um, the uh, cab. And I hope you will remain because now that's the next gen. So I'm leaving, but I have left, but there are others stepping in and the mission continues. So that makes me happy. Okay, great. Next one, uh, Bronx Neighborhood Advisory Board 7, Community Ac Action Board Rep for Region 4, Bronx NAB 7 and 8. Um, yeah, you really shouldn't have favorites. All of you guys are my favorite. But I, really, I really do like Colleen, and, and she is passionate about the borough of the Bronx. And like I told you, we have numerous conversations about what's going on there, what needs to go on there. That's when you know true service, like when you're constantly talking about it and in the trenches and involved. So, Helene Hartman Kanaski, please come up to accept the award. Thank you. Really, it's truly been a pleasure. Can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I did write a little something, but I think, Sandy, you touched on so many of the wonderful points. I think. Very exciting time to be here at CAM mm -hmm. with the data, with the revision plan, with the ambassadors. Um, just the fact that you're really reaching out to the community boards and to other parts of the neighborhood and the youth. It's just, it's just a great time, and I'm really looking forward to what's going to come out of here. But I did want to end my my little thank you note to say that if anyone's from the Bronx, do not hesitate <laughs> to bring it up as often and in as positive a light as you can because we need a lot of love, we need a lot of focus, and uh, it's just really important. Thank you. consistent thing with these vocal <laughs> members. I remember the first time I met her at the meeting and we were discussing SYAP and youth employment and she was, again, had a lot to say in terms of employing uh, youth, especially in Staten Island. Staten Island is one of those other boroughs 
you know, you know, we talk about the Bronx, but Staten Island is one of those other boroughs, you know, kind of gets a bad rap and doesn't get the attention and love that it should. And she was just very uh, adamant about the services that needed to be done there and has done a great job. So certainly happy for your service and congratulations to you as well. have a loud voice to him. Um, I want to first of all thank you guys because I don't know if you guys have seen me because I am on commercials, I am on the train, I am doing, I'm supporting families, but I've learned so much from here and now I'm also working in one plaza with the commissioner, partnering with um, the communities with the Bronx, Manhattan, Staten Island to see how we can better our community to service our youth. But most of what we're thinking is the parents. We have to educate the parents because it starts in the home first. Being a mom, everything that I do is because I've lived it and then I go to study. But all my experience I've lived hands on and then I pass it on to families. So, and I thank the board because the board has shown me how to get to the other communities, work together to build better and stronger communities. I came from Washington Heights, and I know a lot of you know that in Washington Heights nobody wanted to go there. But now, I have 35 that are living there. I was part of that renovation to fix <coughs> the streets and take back our home. But thanks and continue the work. I'm still going to be on the NBA, so I'll be able to let you know what's out there in the community. And then whatever you have, I will bring it to them. I will continue doing the work. But thank you because we are all a family. Is there any old business that we need to discuss? Anyone? Any old business? No business? Any new business? The only new business I like to bring up again, um, as the Deputy Commissioner mentioned, we were up in Albany. Um, they had leadership conferences uh, for uh, a lot of members of CAB organizations throughout New York State and there were a lot of topics there um, that was discussed that was uh, pretty impressive a couple that we may be able to incorporate so I brought back some materials um, that I will uh, bring to the program committee uh, for discussion a lot of it is stuff that we've kind of already set the groundwork for uh, but some that may be incorporated in some of the things um, uh, that we're currently do, doing, so I look forward to bringing that forward to the uh, program committee for consideration, and maybe at some point we will uh, present uh, at the next CAD meeting. With that said, um, thank you all that made it to the meeting. Um, again, look forward to specifics on how we're going to uh, vote on these items, and before we adjourn, I want to make sure that everyone had you know, a great and enjoyable summer. Anita, anything else that I need to discuss? We have lots of food there. Oh. We have bags that you can take at home. Please do. Great. All right, so uh, we're officially adjourning the meeting. Okay, say so happy Father's Day to the Father's Day. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to all the